I am at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine here in Columbia, South Carolina, and I am professor of physiology. I have a PhD in physiology. I did a postdoctoral fellowship and research for many years in physiology, and I've been teaching physiology to medical students for a little over 30 years. All right, what do we like? We're pretty neck and neck there between C and D, C and D. The vast majority of you went with either C or D. Excellent, excellent. This question, prelude into the next topic. What I really want to drive home is resting membrane potential is dominated by potassium conductance. The G stands for conductance. Correct answer here is D. We will come back to this. In this section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an easy way to remember this. But the first big key high yield point, step one, extracellular potassium is the key player in resting membrane potential. You've got a lot of leak channels for potassium. So, Changes in extracellular potassium can change resting membrane potential. But not sodium, not chloride. It's potassium. Potassium, the key player. Again, we'll come back to this. All right, here we go. We got a cell, excitable tissue. You have a high resting potassium conductance. Here's equilibrium for potassium. All right, equilibrium for potassium. Hyperkalemia, illustrated here, increased extracellular potassium, hyperkalemia, always remember emia means blood, hyperkalemia depolarizes, which acutely will increase excitability. All right, let's see why that is. Pop quiz, pop quiz, what's the concentration gradient for potassium to go in or out? This you should know. This you should know. Which way does it want to go, in or out? Concentration-wise. Concentration-wise, it wants to leave the cell. You have a lot more potassium inside the cell than out. All right, what's the electrical gradient? If the cell's sitting at minus 70, inside negative, which way does potassium want to go electrically? It wants to go in. Yeah, it wants to go in. It is a positive charge. It's attracted by the negative on the inside. So the concentration gradient is to leave. The electrical gradient is to go in. Remember, opposites attract. Opposites attract. All right. Now, hyperkalemia will depolarize. If you love math equations, Plug it in, and the change in equilibrium potential will tell you. If you don't want to use the math, if you don't want to memorize this, let me show you an easy way to remember. Hyperkalemia means increased potassium outside the cell. So do you agree that if I increase potassium outside the cell, this decreases the concentration gradient? Do we agree? If I increase potassium outside, there's less of a concentration gradient. Okay? If there's less of a concentration gradient, then maybe some of that positive charge is going to stay in the cell. Positive charge in the cell depolarize. This is the easy way to remember. It's easy. In fact, any time somebody asks, I don't memorize this. I don't memorize hyperkalemia depolar. Any time anybody asks me, I always do this in my head. I always do this in my head. And I'll get it right every single time. Hyperkalemia means elevated potassium outside the cell. That means there's less of a concentration gradient. 
So potassium stays, positive charge depolarizes. Positive charge stays, depolarizes. There's less of a concentration gradient. I just think concentration gradient. That's all I have to do. They will ask me this, and I will do this in my head before I ever answer it. Because the outside went up. Tolam, the outside went up. So something caused the hyperkalemia. Say you go into renal failure. That increases extracellular potassium. That causes a hyperkalemia. So something else is causing the hyperkalemia. Increased outside potassium, less concentration gradient, positive charge stays in the cell, depolarized. So what do you think hypokalemia is going to do? Because the outside went up, Kavya, hyperkalemia, that's what we're starting with. It's going to hyperpolarize, exactly. All right? So hypokalemia hyperpolarizes, which is going to reduce excitability. Do the exact same thing. If potassium is down outside the cell, there's a bigger concentration gradient. Do you agree? And if I got a bigger concentration gradient, positive charge leaves the cell hyperpolarized. That's the easy way to remember it. You can remember it forever. It's so simple to remember it that way. Okay? So use that as your trick to remember what's going to happen to hyper, to uh, resting membrane potential with hypo or hyperkalemia. Very high yield for step one. Very high yield for step one. Extracellular potassium changes. You change the excitability of excitable cells. And the one we're really worried about, the heart. Fatal arrhythmias. Fatal arrhythmias go in either direction, hyper or hypokalemia. Hyper particularly. Okay? And you'll remember it forever, and you're not memory. <laughs> you're only working with stuff you already know. You already know the concentration gradient. You know the charge of potassium, right? Everybody knows it's positively charged. You should know the concentration gradient cold. Like I said, those four ions, you should know the concentration gradient. So you're just working with stuff you already know. And you get it right every single time. Makes life easier. For the math magicians out there, again, just plug it into the Nernst equation. So I go back. We're going to hyperpolarize the skeletal muscle cell. Hyperpolarize the skeletal muscle cell. Quite welcome. We know A and B are wrong because it has to be a potassium because that's the key player. All right, if it's going to hyperpolarize, that means the positive charge left. So I must have had a, a greater concentration gradient. So decreased potassium, decreased potassium outside the cell. And again, for the math magicians in the group, hey, plug it in here. You'll see that it gets more negative. Use what works for you. If you like the math, use the math. If you don't want to use the math, just use this simple way to remember it. But remember it, one way or the other, remember it. Very high yield for step one. Extracellular potassium, big player in influencing resting membrane potential. A lot of leak channels for potassium. All right, now let's alter the conductance of potassium. We're going to start at minus 70. Here's equilibrium. If I increase potassium conductance, you tell me what's going to happen, depolarize or hyperpolarize? It's going to hyperpolarize. You got it. Because what number is the cell going to go toward? What number is the cell 
going to go toward minus 95. Always, always, always. Which way did potassium go? To make the inside more negative. Had to go out. Had to go out. You got it. You know resting. You know equilibrium. You know charge. You got it. You'll figure it out. Makes life easier. We're not memorizing. We're understanding. All right. If I decrease potassium conductance, what do you think is going to happen? Depolarize or hyperpolarize? Remembering I have a high resting conductance. Yeah, I'm going to move away from that. So you're going to depolarize. Excellent. See how to work with it. Y'all are nailing it. Excellent. 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 Yep. All right. Somebody mentioned this earlier, so let's talk about this. Sodium has a higher concentration outside than inside, so some of it's going to sneak into the cell. Potassium has more inside than outside, so some of it sneaks out of the cell. Because there's gradients to do that. The electrochemical gradient is to do that. So what does the cell develop to fix that? The sodium potassium ATPase. It's going to take that sodium and say, hey, get back out of the cell. Hey, potassium, you come back. You come back. So it's going to pump sodium out, bring potassium in. In a stoichiometry of three sodium out, two potassium in. Is that going to influence the charge inside the cell? If I pump three sodium out and only replace it with two potassium? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This pump is what we call electrogenic. It keeps the inside more negative. So the sodium potassium ATPase helps keep the inside negative. It helps keep high potassium inside the cell, helps keep high sodium outside the cell. This is not really a player in repolarization for most tissue. That's going to be voltage gated channels, but that's a great question, I believe. Maybe a little bit in the heart, but it's mostly going to be voltage gated channels. All right, do you agree? Three solute out, two solute in, net effect is that's going to tend to pull water out. Got three solute leaving, only replacing it with two. Got a net solute loss of one. This pump is also important for regulating cell volume. So sodium potassium ATPase, darn important pump. Keeps the inside negative. Keeps high potassium inside the cell. Keeps sodium high outside the cell. And it's important for cell volume regulation. Um, the sodium potassium ATPase by and large is running on its own, but insulin and epinephrine are going to be factors that uh, influence it greatly. 